Hi, everybody. Hope everybody's having a good day today so far. Uh, we are going to start out by spending a few minutes talking about sets and n-tuples. Now, in this first lecture, and probably for the first few lectures, a lot of what we do is probably going to be review for most of you. I say a lot, but probably not all of what we're going to do will be review. But it's still the case that even though some of this is, is going to be familiar, uh, it's still uh, important for us to kind of do that review, to start out with things that are familiar and straightforward for us, and also so that we all kind of get on the same page in terms of the concepts and the notation for those concepts that we're using. So let's start out uh, by talking ab about the, uh, the special sets of numbers that we use and the special notation for those sets. And so let's start with uh, R, uh, the special kind of R with the two lines on the, uh, on the left. And that's, of course, the set of real numbers. And we often, of course, represent the set of real numbers by uh, geometrically, by a line, and uh, we even refer to that line as the real line often, and kind of synonymously with R, the set of real numbers, and we think of the elements of the real numbers as being the points on, on the line. And uh, then we have uh, the special symbol N, which is the set of natural numbers. And that is the set consisting of the counting numbers. Natural numbers are the counting numbers. And so that's one, two, three, and so on indefinitely. We have the set of integers. That is the set uh, of all the negative and positive integers, and of course zero. So the dot, 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 ellipsis, or dots here, just indicates this goes on forever in the positive direction, this goes on forever in the positive direction, and also goes on forever in the negative direction. And uh, the remaining kind of special symbol that we use is this Q for the set of rational numbers. Why Q? I have no idea. I don't know why we use Q for the set of rational numbers. Uh, maybe there's a reason. I've never, no, no one has ever, <laughs> it's never come up really, I guess, before. So let's just point out that we can actually write down a definition of the set in this way. It's the set of all real numbers such that uh, X is a ratio of, uh, of integers. So such that x equals m over n for some m and n in uh, z, that is, for some integers. Now, this might look uh, a little suspicious. You might be a little skeptical of this because you could say, wait a minute now, one of the integers is 0, and if the denominator is that integer, well then we're not going to get a uh, we're not going to get a rational we're not going to get any kind of number because uh, any any integer divided by zero doesn't have any meaning so you might say oh that doesn't look quite right but that's actually not so this is actually okay <laughs> and so let's uh, see why that might be so note that I could rewrite the part over here to the right of the vertical line that's that delineates which x's we're talking about, I could rewrite this as follows. A backwards e uh, uh, 
a backwards E, which we mean, which we read as there exists, there exist, I guess we'd say here, there exist integers M and N uh, such that X equals M over N. So this is uh, the existential quantifier that we use all the time. We're going to talk about that in probably the next lecture, so I won't belabor anything about that here. But this simply is an alternative way to write what we have here. So it says it's the set of all real numbers for which there are, there are integers such that the real number is m over n. You can say, well, that really kind of looks the same, and it, and it actually is the same, but this perhaps makes it a little clearer that the zero is ruled out in what we've said here, because this says it's a set of all real numbers such that there exists an m and an n, such that the number is m over n, but of course, if uh, there is no n such that uh, any real number would be equal to m over zero. There is no, if n is zero, then uh, there is no m that will go along with zero to give me m over zero as a real number. So this is okay, it's just that, that the, the number zero, the integer zero, just can't show up uh, uh, in, this, in this ratio. Now there are, uh, there's a collection of additional special symbols for these sets that uh, we should look at briefly, and that would be if we write R plus, that is the set of all real numbers such that X is greater than or equal to zero. So it's just the non-negative real numbers, and it's a little bit counterintuitive because you'd think with, with a plus down here, then presumably this is the positive, strictly positive real numbers, and I think that would be the, the, the right intuition in some sense, but it just happens that the convention everybody uses is that R sub plus is the non-negative real numbers, and we use R plus plus for the strictly positive real numbers. So this is, so this is the set R plus plus, the strictly positive real numbers. And of course, uh, we use the same notation occasionally for Z plus uh, and Q plus to be the non-negative integers and the non-negative uh, rational numbers. And we uh, sometimes use Z plus plus and Q plus plus for the strictly positive integers and the strictly positive rational numbers. And in fact, I don't know that we probably ever, ever have to use this because the strictly positive integers is the same thing as the set of natural numbers. So we would typically just use this. So these are just special symbols that we use for these particular special sets of numbers that we kind of use all the time. Now, the next thing that I, uh, I want to talk about here is that we can, if we have a set X, so let's say here, for any set capital X, it could be R, it could be uh, the, the rationals, it could be R plus plus, or it actually could be a set uh, that, that doesn't consist of numbers. It could be a set of people, uh, a set of colors, as we're gonna see in a little while. Uh, for any set X, we can form what are called uh, n-tuples, and we often use the word lists instead, n-tuples or lists of elements or members of X. And so uh, a typical uh, n-tuple, I would use just a letter X, let's say, as the name of the whole n-tuple, or the whole list, and uh, it would consist of 
of uh, a list with parentheses around it, a list of elements of x. So for example, if this is, uh, if capital X is the real numbers, then this would just be a list of n real numbers. So where xi is in uh, capital X, and here, uh, here we'll just write i equals 1 to n. This would be the name of the n-tuple of the list, and I should point out that we often refer to these, we often add on the adjective ordered n-tuples, or ordered lists. So let's put that down here. And the reason for that is because the order really matters here. And I'm not going to say more about that right now because in just a few minutes we're going to do a couple of examples where we'll see that and I'll bring that out a little more, in a little more detail. Uh, the, the various uh, components of the uh, n-tuples are called components. So that's the word we use to refer to the individual elements. I don't want to use elements, that can be a little confusing, but the individual items in the list. Okay, and so these are the components of the n-tuple x. And we have a notation that we use for the set of all n-tuples from a set x. So that would be x to the n, or just xn, we often say. And that is, by definition, um, the set of all uh, x such that uh, x equals x1 to xn. Uh, x i and x i one to n. Okay, so this is just just a notation for the set of all n tuples drawn from some set x. So now I think what we want to do is uh, let's take off the uh, everything on this side of the uh, screen. And we'll do a few, we'll do a couple of examples to kind of bring out uh, some particular issues um, involving sets and n-tuples. So we'll take this off and then we'll be right back.